questions while I'm lecturing, please put them in the chat. I'll be checking the chat every one to two minutes. And at the end, we can open it up and just you can ask questions. We can talk about labs or assignments and projects, pie charm, whatever it is you guys need to talk about. So uh, this week, we are talking about strings. OK, let me do that, do that, and list because a string is a list, a special kind of a list. And we're also starting the process of talking about lists because we're going to use a, a method called split to create a list from a string. And that's something you're going to be doing for pretty much the remainder of the class. So what is a string? It's an ordered collection of characters surrounded by quotes. That's it. That's all a string is in Python. It is also what we call immutable. Immutable means you cannot change a string. And I think that's sometimes a difficult concept for students because, but you have to be able to change a string. And yes, you do. You can change, you can create a new string with a change in it from another string but you can't actually change the string in place. And I'll explain what that means in just a couple minutes. Um, when you see something like this in a script, I have a variable called myster. We know it's a variable because it's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. On the right-hand side of a single equal sign, I have a double quote, the words, this is a string, and a double quote, and by the way, there are spaces because spaces are characters. Um, and that's what a string is. That's all a string is. It can be a short string. It can be a long string. But that is what a string is in Python. Um, what Python sees is just like what we saw last week, but with a little twist. So I have the name of my variable called myster. And what Python does with what's in those quotes is it creates a list of characters. It's just an ordered list, each character after the other. But you also notice in the value, the quotes are not part of the string. The quotes are a notation to Python that this is a string. So that's important to remember because when we're looking at something like the length of a string, you're only talking about the length of what's in between the quotes. And what we see here is all those little boxes are meant to be a, one element in a list. OK, so here's the rule. For every open quote, you must have a closing quote of the same type. Now, Python's pretty, um, you can use either single quotes or double quotes in Python. It doesn't matter. It's all the same. But you have whatever you opened the string with, you have to close the string with. So the, the quotes around a string have to match. OK, what's not a string? This is not a string. Python is going to give you a syntax error. And when we go through some Python and PyCharm, I'll show you what the actual error is, because some of them are not intuitive. OK, this is another syntax error. I'm opening with a double quote, and I am closing with a single quote. And this is also a syntax error. I'm opening with a double quote. And then I've got this other double quote and then this closing double quote. Well, what Python's going to do is it's going to say, my stir is equal to this is a space quote. And then it's going to tell you it doesn't know what string quote is supposed to be. So you have to make sure that if you're going to have a quote inside of a quote, and they're the same type, in this case they're all double quotes, you have to what we call escape it. So you use backslash, you escape it, and Python will know not to read that quote as anything other than a character in a string. Because for us, you know, we're looking at the keyboard and you can just 
hit the quote, and the quotes are a character. But Python doesn't use them as the character unless you tell it to. So, for every open quote, you must have a closing quote of the same type. I'm probably going to say this a lot, and it's just going to sound like a broken record, but it's something I think I want to make sure that gets through to people who are here tonight and people who are watching the video, because it's also something that I see students get stuck on. Um, so it's important to remember, got to have your quotes balanced, and they have to be the same type. So how do I correct those syntax errors that we just saw? Well, this is a string is simple. If I'm missing the closing quote, then all I have to do is add a closing quote. If I have an opening quote that's a double quote and a closing quote that's a single quote, I can just replace the closing quote with a double quote. And for the last one, I have an opening double quote, I have a closing double quote, and that middle double quote that I don't, I want to use as a character, I can escape it. So the other thing to do here would be to change the outer quotes to single quotes and leave the double quotes inside. So there are two ways to do that. Um, let's look at ordered. I said a list. Sorry, a string was an ordered collection of characters. What do we mean by ordered? Well, what we see is this is a string, and this is what Python sees. And Python uses a number to keep track of the order. So what every character has in a string is a corresponding number. I call it an index number. That number tells it, so Python says, I have a capital T at position zero, at index zero. I have a, cap, a lowercase h at index one. I have a lowercase i at index two, and so forth until you get to the g at index 15. So that's how Python knows the order. There is a number associated with every single box Every single character has its own number, starting at zero. All lists in Python start at zero. You can't change it. It's just the way it is. I know some people are like, why doesn't it start at one? I don't know why it doesn't start at one. It starts at zero. So the first character is always at zero, and the last character is always at the length of the string minus one. So if there are 16 characters and this is a string, the first index will be 0 and the last index will be 15. So that is how all lists behave in Python. And right now, we're just talking about strings as lists. We're going to talk about, we're going to kind of foray into lists in a minute and talk a little bit more about them because you're going to have to do um, you're going to have to do a lab with lists tonight. And we're pretty much going to use them even before we get to lists and dictionaries, which are in week six. So any questions? No questions. Okay. I'll keep going on this one. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody's questions. So this is ordered. I'll get back to that part. Sorry about that. So it can be read as T is at index 0, H is at index 1, I is at index 2, and so forth. Um, lists. So let's go back and look at some syntax for strings for just a minute. And uh, uh, 
No, maybe not. Well, let's, let me just do this. Here's a string called Boohoo. We'll look at it in another minute. But you see, but let's just look. I want you to, I want you to see some errors because some errors are intuitive and some errors aren't. So I have the word Boohoo here in my string for my stir. I have a variable called my underscore stir. I know it's a variable. It's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. On the right-hand side is Boohoo. And right now, it runs. If I edit my configuration, I go here. I end up at my teaching stuff. Sorry about that. should have had it ready. And I'm in Module 2. Boohoo. Okay. And if I run this, It'll do what I want it to do. And we'll talk about this stir find here in a minute. If I take this away, first of all, if I'm in PyCharm, I get these wonderful red squiggly lines. And if I mouse over where the red squiggly lines are, it will tell me exactly how to fix it. So when you're programming in PyCharm, use the features. This is one of the features in PyCharm. It will tell you if there is a syntax error. However, if I decide to run this, I get a weird error that says EOL while scanning string literal. And what that is just telling me is that it's missing something at the end of the line. And in this case, it's a single quote. Now, Python, the error message from Python is never going to tell me I'm missing a single quote. But PyCharm will. Now, what if I just add a double quote here? Well, I still have a red squiggly in PyCharm. PyCharm still telling me I'm missing a single quote because I am. And I get the exact same message down here from Python interpreter because this started as a single quote Python is going to read everything after that single quote until it finds another single quote as a string. So it doesn't recognize this as ending that string. It only says that's a double quote, but I'm looking for a single quote. So when I put this back to a single quote, whoops, everything's back to normal. So list. Why are we foraying into lists? Because the way that iBooks does it is you're going to have to use lists this week. So how is a list different than a string? A list is an ordered collection of elements. It could be characters. It could be strings. It could be integers, floats. And when we get to week eight, it could be objects that you create. Um, and, and that element, it can be just about anything. It can be another list. It can be a dictionary. It can be all kinds of stuff. Lists are immutable, which means you can change them. And here's what you see in your script. So I have a variable called my list. I know it's a variable. It's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. Now, there's some new syntax going on here. There is an open left bracket square bracket, and then I have these three things separated by commas. I have the word Lisa in quotes, I have a comma, I have the number 42, and then I have the float 3.14. So the beginning of a list is always an open square bracket. You will have some number of elements, maybe none, and then you will end it with a closing square bracket. Your brackets have to be balanced. You have to open with, if you open with one, you've got to close with one. And all elements, however many there are, have to be separated with a comma. There is no comma after the final element. So you'll notice here, there's no comma after 3.14. 
So what do I see on the right? I see the variable name my list, and I see a list with three elements. Lisa is at index 0, 42 is at index 1, and 3.14 is at index 2. Um, so it's just like a string in that all elements have a corresponding index number. That index is beginning at zero. That's the first index is always zero. There's no way to change it. Um, let's see. Now we're going to talk about CRUD. I will, I will mention this many times in this class. CRUD is create, read, update, and delete. And it's what you can do to a list, and it's what you can do to a dictionary. Um, and you can do the create and read and delete on a string. You can't do the update, which means you can't modify it in place, but you can use a function in Python to create a new string from an old string with a modification. So create is to make it a new list. Read is to get at the data within the list. Update is to modify the elements within the list. And delete is either to remove an element from a list or to get rid of the thing altogether. So let's talk about CRUD for lists. Create. I can create a list in two ways. I can create an empty list, which means there's nothing between the, the opening and closed square brackets. It's still a variable on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. In this case, the variable is my empty list. I have a single equal sign. And on the right-hand side, I have just an open and closed square bracket. There's nothing in the list. And then I can create a populated list, which means I create a list that's already got information in it. And we, this is the same one we saw on the last one. I can read or access data in the list. So in my list, I am going to say, uh, say I want to get at the, at the first element in the list. The syntax is the variable name, in this case my list, open square bracket, the number of the index, close square bracket. So here what I am saying is, Hey, Python, get me the first element or get me the element at index 0 from variable my list. That's how to read that. My list, open square bracket, 0, close square bracket. And what it will give me is a 0. Or sorry, is the word Lisa. And this is handy because I can use that to change that value. Okay, if I want to print my list two, it's Python goes, okay, I've got a variable my list, the, set, the third element. So at zero, one, two, that's going to be the third element in the list. I want that value. That value is 3.14. So Go to the next one, and then we'll do some crud.py because I want to show you some things that could could cause consternation. All right, update. I have a list. It's the same list we saw on the other page. My list. And now I want to change the element, the, the value at index 1 for my list. What I do is, I use the variable my list. Inside the square brackets, I put a 1 because that's the index of the value I want to change. And then to the right-hand side of a single equal sign, I put the new value. So the left-hand side of a single equal sign is the variable, open square bracket, the index that I want to change, the, index, the value, the index that points to the value I want to change, and then to the right-hand side of a single equal sign is the new value. I can also add to the end of a list. Now, this is using my list, 
and we're looking at a dot notation here. So this is a specific type of notation for Python. And what that dot does is it tells Python what it's going to change. So append is saying, OK, you're going to add something to the end of a list. But what list am I adding it to the end of? Well, I'm adding it to the end of my list. So the syntax is my list dot append, and then whatever's in the parentheses, because append is a function, I want to just add to the end of the list. So I'm going to grow my list using the append function. So my list dot, that dot, the dot notation says on my list. So append. Again, on my list, the word add. That's kind of how you read that. I can delete by using the del keyword, D-E-L, and I can delete an element from a list. So let's say I wanted to delete the element that was at zero in my list. So I'm going to delete Lisa. And so what Python is going to do is it's going to do an automatic renumbering. I get rid of what was at element 0. And then Python's going to say, OK, well, I still have three elements, so I'm going to renumber it. I'm going to, you know, what was 1 is now going to be 0. What was 2 is now going to be 1. And what was 3 is now going to be 2. So that's how you remove something from a list. So when you remove something from a list, you're shrinking it. Append grows it, and del shrinks it. Del can also be used in a different way. Sorry. Um, you can also get rid of the whole list by saying del my list, which is what's happening there on the bottom. But I want to do the remove first. The remove is, again, using that dot notation. So I have my list dot remove at the word add. And what that does is say, hey, Python, if you find the word add, the value add, in my list, remove it. So basically it's on against my list, remove the word add. And that's where that dot notation comes in, because the dot notation tells it what you're acting on. And then the function after, it's always a function afterwards. The function afterwards is telling you what to do. So remove can also shrink the list. But instead of removing it based on the index number, you're removing it based on the value. Because add was the value, not the index number. And then you can also delete the whole list. You just get rid of it. It's like it never happened. OK. So let me pull up grud.py. OK. So this is pretty much what you saw. But sometimes it makes it easier to go through this in code. Mm -hmm. So what we have is I've created an empty list. I'm going to print it. So let's just walk through this so we can see. So we have our handy dandy. Let's go to edit configuration. I'm going to do crud. So I'm going to debug this because that is my favorite thing to do with an IDE is debug it. So I have no variables. Right now I don't have anything at the console. But I am stopped at line number two. So I'm going to step over empty list, and then I'm going to print it, and there's nothing in the list. I'm going to define my list, and now I'm going to print each of the elements at the list. So I'm going to step over, and I'm going to print my list at index zero is Lisa. Now, something I want to sh talk to you about on line 12. The value 42, which is at my list of 1, is not a string. 
I cannot treat it like an integer in a print statement, I have to convert it to a string. Just like last week, if you had an integer, you had to convert it to a string. The same thing happens. Nothing changes because it's in a list except how you get at the value. So I had to change 42 to a string for it to print out, and I had to change 3.14 to a string to get it to print out. So now I'll go over here to frames and variables. Frames and variables is a really handy dandy tab because it tells you what something is at any point in time. It says empty list has is a list of length zero, and we can see that there's nothing in the brackets. My list is a list of length three, and it's Lisa 42 and 3.14. Now on line 16, I am telling it to change the value of my list at index 1. So right here and make it 25. So watch that line where the 42, when I step over line 16, it now becomes 25. So that's what I've done. I've changed the list in place. So now I'm going to print my list. And then I'm going to append the word add. So let's go back to frames and variables. When I step over that, I now have a list of length 4, and I've added the string add to the end. So I'm going to print it again. There it is at the console. I'm going to pop, which is a way to delete things. Uh, so if I go back to frames and variables, I'm sorry, I should have stopped there. I did a pop which basically says, pop something off the list. So I popped the thing at 1. So now I have Lisa 3.14 and add. I'm going to print my list again. And now I'm going to remove add. Remember, the remove function removes based on a value, not an index. Everything else we've done, well, sorry. Um, most of the other stuff we've done has been about using the index. Append and remove are about using the value. So I now have a list that's only two, and I'm going to print it, and I'm done. OK. So why are we talking about lists? Because a string is a list, but it can't be modified, at least not in the way that we modify a list. So how do I change a string? Well, I'm going to create a copy and then modify the copy on creation, or actually Python's going to do that for me. Python gives us a whole host of functions that you can use on strings. So CRUD kind of applies. You can create a string, you can read a string, you can delete the entire string, and you can update by creating a string with a new modification. So let's go take a look. Create my empty stir. I create an empty string by simply having close, open and close quotes with nothing in between them. I can have a string that's populated. We've seen us, we've, we've done that a couple of times. I can read a string. Let's see, say I want to get at the very first character. It's the exact same thing I did with a list. In this case, it's just my stir, open, open square bracket, the number of the index, close square bracket. I can also just print the 10th index, which is going to get me in it a capital S. I can read and create at the same time. So this is called string slicing. And what this does is that this takes a chunk out of the string and creates a new string from it. So when I slice, the syntax is important. I'm going to have a variable on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. That is going to be a new variable. It's not going to be the same variable my string is in. On the right-hand side of the single equal sign, it's going to be the variable name of the string that I want to get the chunk out of. And then I'm going to have a start index, a colon, and an end index. Now, this is kind of weird. Because the start index is exactly where you want to start. I'm going to start at capital S. 
but the end index is not. The end index is non-inclusive, which means that number isn't the number you're going to stop at. You're going to stop at 1 minus that number. So when we do 10 colon 13 on this graph, we're going to get S, T, and R for the stir of string, but we're not going to get the I. The last number is non-inclusive, so it's always that number minus 1. I know it's one of those things like zero's weird, but that's just the way it is. So this is called string slicing because we're kind of slicing a bit out of it. So, um, so yeah, the, the start index is inclusive, the end index isn't. And this is kind of like challenge 2.9.1. How are we doing for time? We're doing okay. So let's look at that. 2.9.1. So I have a start index and an end index. I'm going to have the cow jumped over the moon, and I'm going to get a, a sub-lyric from my lyric. So let's just run this real quick. Uh, and then we will go here and 2.91. So all this is going to do is this is going to say, hey, by the way, I'm going to run it in the debugger. It's going to want me to put in two numbers. So I'm just going to put in five and I'm going to put in 12. And then it's going to say the lyric is the cow jumped over the moon and I want to get the characters starting at index 5 and ending at 12 minus 1, which would be 11. So my sub lyric is going to be how jump. And then I'm going to print the sub lyric and I'm done. So that is what string slicing looks like in action. And that is something that you might just have to do in a lab this week. Okay, a little more string slicing. There's some shorthand that we can do here. So if I want to start at letter 8 and go all the way to the end of the string, I don't need an end index in the, in the slicing. I can just have the start index, which would be 8, colon, inside the square bracket. And then it's just going to say, get me everything starting at index 8 all the way to the end. And I can do the opposite, which is I can say, get me everything from the very beginning to, in this, in this example, the number 4. Or um, 4, sorry, 2 the fourth element or the third index. So the shorthand here is we don't need anything before that colon. We can say my stir open square bracket, just the colon because Python will know that it means start at index zero. Four, which means get me everything up to index three and then a close bracket. So it'll get me this. So that's just some simple shorthand for string slicing, which can make things a little easier. There are a whole host of string methods. And these are all just to help you find things and um, count things and all kinds of stuff. So let's say I want to find the first occurrence of a lowercase s in Meister. I would use this dot notation, and on the left-hand side, I'm going to have a variable name. And that variable name right now is just index. I have a single equal sign. Um, sorry, on the left-hand side of the single equal sign is the word index, which is the variable. On the right-hand side of the single equal sign is my stir dot find, and in quotes, it's the character S in the parentheses. What 
Pyth- what that tells Python to do is, hey Python, find me the first occurrence of occurrence of s in the string Meister. That's what it's going to do, and it will go out and it will find that index. Now, let's say I want to replace a portion of a string. So I can create a new string, and I can use this function called replace, again with the dot notation, and I can say any place you find this particular string, and in this case it's the word this, replace it with the word that. So I'm go- Python's going to create a brand new string. It's going to set that string into the variable called my newster, and it's going to look for all occurrences of capital T, lowercase h-i-s, and replace it with capital T, lowercase h-a-t. So that is how you create a, a new string from an existing string with a modification. And then you can count the number of occurrences of a character in the string. You will have to use this this week in a lab. Okay, so I have my string, it's my stir, and I am going to say, hey, Python, count all of the number of times the lowercase i shows up in the string that's contained in the variable my stir, and give me that back as an integer. In this case, Python will give you, that, give you back the number three, because lowercase i happens three times. String splitting and joining. This is, you're just going to use it for the rest of the term, especially string splitting. If I have a string, and that string is got some kind of a delimiter, something that separates the string in some way that's, that can be recognized as a pattern, I can create a list from that string. So in this case, I'm going, I've got a string called myster, and that string has the word first and the word second separated by a comma. I can tell Python using the split function to give me back a list where every time it hits a comma, it creates a new element in the list. So for this example, I have my stir, which is first comma second. And if I use the dot notation with the split function, and the argument to that is a comma, I will get a list back with the string first as the first element in the list and the string second as the second element in the list. And I can say join which will do the opposite. (laughs) So join is the opposite of split. I can take a list and I can say, okay, Python, I want you to join this list. But the syntax is a a little odd because I have to, join is executed against a string. But I don't have a string. I have a list. So what you have to do, if you don't already have a string, and the common usage of this is to use double quotes, dot, join, and then the list you want to join, and it will, in fact, create a new list. Now, you could have put a comma space in there, and it would have done first comma space second, creating a full string. Okay, string formatting. There's this wonderful function called format. And it helps with code reusability. And it allows for parameterized string formatting. And the other thing is you don't have to worry about converting because if you use the dot format notation, the dot format function, you won't have to worry about changing an integer to a string or anything like that. The way this works is I have 
the print function. Now I don't have to have this inside of a print function, but this is often the way it's used. And then I have placeholders. Um, in this case, I have three placeholders. The placeholders are um, an open squiggly brace and a closed squiggly brace. And in the, the second one, I also have what they call a format modifier. So the placeholder is just that. It's just saying, I'm expecting something here. And under the hood, I'm just going to swap out these uh, curly braces for whatever value you're going to give me. And in this case, I'm going to give it a value that's stored in variable num1, and then I'm going to give it a value that's stored in variable float1, and then I'm going to give it a value that's stored in my stir. Now, it's positional, which means the first squiggly brace is replaced by the value of the first variable in format. The second set is by the second variable and the third one is by the third variable. Now it's important to note here that that middle one, that middle placeholder, has what they call a format specifier. That format specifier says how do you print this out? Well, in this case it is colon dot 2f which is saying Python's expecting a float and I only want to print two decimal places after, I only want to print two numbers after the decimal place. So this becomes important because the float has to be the second one. If not, you will get an error. So let's look at simple float here for a second. Or sorry, simple format. So here we just have a couple of different format specifiers. And, or sorry, print statements using the format function. So here I have num1 is 32, pi is 3.14, blah, 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 and meister is pi day. So I'm going to put a little breakpoint there. I'm going to edit my configuration and go to simple format. I just want to show you what happens if you do it right and then if you do it wrong. So I am going to debug, and the first place it's going to stop in the debugger is the print statement. And this one's going to work, and what it's going to do is it's going to say, go to the console, it's going to say I'm 32 and it's 3.14 pi day. So it's 32 is num1, and I can even, hold on should be able to, uh, in PyCharm, one of the nice features is if it's a variable, I can mouse over it and it will tell me the type of the variable and its value. So for instance, pi is a float, 3.14159, and meister is a string, and it's pi day. So I'm going to step over this. And you will see that it prints I am 32 and it's 3.14 pi day. And then I'm going to do another one. And it's very similar. And, but in this case, we have two decimal places here and three decimal places. What I want to do is I want to change something. I want to make this my stir. And I'm going to, whoops. And I'm going to make this pi. Now, You'll notice I do not have any errors. No syntax errors, no red squigglies, nothing. But when I debug this, I'm going to crash. My program's going to give me a nasty error. But remember, the only thing I did was change Meister and Pi. So when I step over this, I get this nasty little error here. Unknown format code F for object of type stir with all this other stuff here. Looks big and nasty. It kind of is big and nasty. What happened? What happened was this right here is telling Python to expect a float. I didn't give it a float. I gave it a string by switching those two variables. And all of a sudden, I got all this red nastiness. 
So when you are using the dot format method on a string, if you have a spe format specifier, you have to make sure you're passing a variable of the right type. So for me to fix this, I go back to having pi, and I go back to having my star. And when I debug this, it's going to go back to working just fine. Here's all the stuff at the console. So that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, 17. Uh, oh, and here's the string formatting example. We'll just go over this real quick. So this is what we just saw in the code. So these are positional, and this is what I mean by positional. So pi is in the second position, meister is in the third, num1 was in the first position. So they will be replaced by the position they are in the argument list for the format function. Here's this example, same thing, except I have Meister in the second place, and I try and and I get a syntax error. So it's not a syntax error, it's actually a logic error. And I just showed you in that other one. It's got to match the type of the variable. And I bring this up specifically because I've seen a lot of students have problems with that. Okay, so let's go over the labs. Um, so there's lab 2.12, and I will do this once in this class and only once. Uh, the solution to lab 2.12 is actually uh, a link in the description, and that is because we do not provide you enough information to be able to successfully complete this lab. You need to have branches. And we don't do branches till next week. The paragraph they put in here of how to do it is ridiculous. The school knows I do, do this. I don't know if all the professors do, but I told the school a long time ago I was doing this, and I've done it for a long time. So, And it's the only time I'm ever going to give you an answer. So what can we learn from this? Well, we can learn... Um, that what they want you to do is they want you to use a specific format for a person's name. So you're going to get input for either three, three names, first name, middle name, last name, or, and this is the problem, first name and last name. So based on how many elements you have in your list, you have to do something different. That requires branching. We don't talk about branching until next week. So you're going to split a string based on a delimiter. In this case, it's going to be a space delimiter. You're going to use the print statement with the format function to print out last name, comma, first initial dot, middle initial dot, or you're going to print out last name, comma, first initial dot. And like I said, the solution is in the um, is in the, the link to the solution is in the description for the um, the video. Okay, but we are still going to go over the logic for it. So I'm going to declare a variable called name. I'm going to input last name, first name, and middle name. I'm going to declare a name list. I'm going to just Split that in using a space delimiter, so that's going to be the split function. And here's the part that you don't have. If the length of name list is greater than two, we don't know how to do that yet. If it's false, then we're going to print, we're going to output name underscore list of zero, comma, name underscore list of one of zero, which again, you don't know how to do um, multidimensional lists yet. If it's true, then we're going to output something a little different, and then we're going to end it. So that is why I give you the solution to that, because they're just asking you to do way too much of stuff you don't know. Okay, lab 2.13, I do not give you the answer to this, because you do have all the stuff to do it. 
So write a program whose input is a string which contains a character and a phrase and whose output indicates the number of times the character appears in the phrase. So what you're going to have to do here is you're going to have to declare a string. Somebody's going to input it. Then you're going to declare a list. You're going to split Meister into my list. Then you're going to declare a care count variable. Sorry about my backwards. Um, oops. We'll go back. Sorry about that. So then you're going to set care count to the character count. So here is where you're going to use the dot count function like we did in a previous slide. That's the whole point of this. You've got to split it, and then you got to use the dot count function of, that is the first element in the list against the second element in the list. And then you're going to output the character count and be done. So the big part here is you've got to split it with a string, sorry, with a space, and then you've got to get the character count. And you've got to use the elements in the list to do it. Okay, two point one four. So this is um, this is using the format specifier again. And then you, what you're going to do here is you're going to create. You're going to enter two words and a number. You're going to store them each in separate variables. So you're going to have three input statements. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use those the, the letters, sorry, the the strings and the number to create some passwords. So. You're going to output two passwords. The first one is going to be word number one underscore word number two, and the second one is going to be number underscore number word number one number. You can do those however you want, either concatenating a string or using the format modifier. And then you're going to put the output the, the length of each password, which is the number of characters in the string. So, whoops. I don't know why that's there. So here is the uh, flowchart. You're going to declare the three words. You're going to declare two words and a number. You're going to input them. You're going to declare password one and password two. I highly suggest that you create your passwords and store them. So you want to have them in a variable. And then you're going to put set password one to uh, word underscore, sorry, I have those two uh, mixed up. And then you're going to output word password one and password two, and then you're going to output the length of password one and the length of password two. So that is the flowchart for this. So that's what I have for tonight. Does anybody have any questions? And we can open it up and you can ask anything you want. Going once. Going twice. Okay, everybody have a really wonderful weekend. This should be up tomorrow. Uh, if you're in my class, please email me if you, oops. No problem, Alexandra. If you're in my class, email me if you have any questions, and I will talk to you later. Okay.